It's been there since the foundation of the world. Reshaping man's thoughts and ideas of life and redirecting man's pursuit in life to fit its agenda. It's a matter of these guys working through men endlessly using every way to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's Mammon, the spirit behind money. Charles and Susan Opil in their book Unmasking Mammon help their readers unmask this deadly spirit and embark on a journey back to the Father. Unmasking Mammon is a must read. Now available on Amazon and on order at cyruscom254 at gmail.com for physical copies. Grab your copy today and start off your journey to overcoming the spirit of Mammon. Unmasking Mammon by Charles and Susan Opio. Every time God something was holy, it meant this particular thing carries a divine assignment to be mm -hmm. carried out in the earth. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, we have to be contextual, meaning the Holy Spirit is not limited to what we have seen, so yet, Per situation, we have to use context, meaning within a context, we'll, when we say the Holy Spirit is operating in a context, we will not give the whole fullness of the Holy Spirit. Mm, so you're talking about be, to be contextual, yes. but open-ended. You mean open-ended. Meaning that tomorrow there is more. a new truth. Yes, there is more in God than we'll ever know. But within the context of our lifetime, we can unpack as much as we can, but they'll always be open-ended, meaning God will still be able to do more. Mm. So wisdom here is used in the context of spiritual insight, and skill of administration. Listen to that. Meaning wisdom means I have insight of God's intent on this matter, but I also have the skill to carry it out. Mm. I have the ability, the administration, the strategy. This same wisdom has been used in other places like strategy in war. Mm. Strategy to carry out an assignment. So this is not just wisdom to be wise. This is wisdom to be applied. Knowledge here is totally different. It means to have a huge, listen to the term, mm -hmm. huge and diverse database of different things. Mm -hmm. Understanding in this context meant intelligence. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Comprehension of concepts, patterns, capacity to, to interpret complex things. Think of it this way. The Bible says that God showed Moses the Ark of the Covenant. And it was to be designed with two angels. Mm. How does Bezalil interpret angels? Mm. Mm. You have to think funny. differently. You and me have read scriptures that say angels have wings. Angels mm -hmm. have, he has not. So he had to see something in the spirit. Mm. The spirit of God had to show him what an angel looks like. When we see his CV, yes. we will think he had wisdom. That's a problem. He had wisdom of the, of the earth. Yes. God tells you, and God added him wisdom. Why did he need wisdom? And he had what we think is wisdom. Exactly. God tells you there's another level that if I give you this now, he was above the magicians and the astrologers yes. of Nebuchadnezzar. Exactly. Yeah? If you're given wisdom without knowledge and without understanding, you'll apply nothing. Mm. And there'll be no difference between you yes. and the astrologers. Exactly. Workmanship. Now, workmanship, now we come to the crafting. So when you have knowledge, understanding and wisdom, when all that comes together, the craftsmanship, mm. we're talking about excellence. Mm. We're talking about design. Mm. We're talking about by the time it would have been useless for Bezalel to know all these things. And then they cannot end up with something so excellent, so valuable, so well designed. Remember, if, you, if you're one of those guys who study the Old Testament, you'll discover that the design of the ark of the covenant and all the other designs that were put towards the temple mm -hmm. uh, or what you call the holy of holies the tabernacle everything was the exact design that corresponds with the three dimensions of god father son holy spirit there is a the outer court holy court, uh, outer court inner court holy of holies it was also the design of the human being body soul spirit imagine how accurate mm -hmm. what they put in the earth had to have patterns of spiritual things that we can teach for generations. Mm. So he wasn't just putting up a design. Yes. He was putting up a template for spiritual understanding. 
of how things were going to operate until Christ. Mm. After Christ, that design was no longer necessary, but that template remained real in the spirit. And the, when you say it was not necessary, yes. it means now we have to go again and say, wait a minute, yes. the Holy Spirit yes. has the workmanship required for the next level. Exactly. And that's what you're talking about design, you're talking yes. about creative yes. innovation. Yes. Now you, as you're listening to us, ask yourself, how creative are you? Yes. Ask yourself, for the last one month, what have you been doing? Mm -hmm. Have you been doing it the same way mm -hmm. that tells you you need the Holy Spirit of Thank God you. To, uh, to be activated inside yes. of you? How productive, mm. how profitable. Mm. If you're in service, how excellent is your service? Mm. Mm. Are you highly skilled or are you just getting by? Good questions. Because if you talk about being filled in the yes. Holy Spirit and God yes. is giving you wisdom, yes. understanding, is giving you knowledge and workmanship or skills in different things, this is what we are saying. So I'm looking at me and I'm saying, how excellent am yeah. I in my working? Yes. Am I, do I have designs that when people look at you, mm -hmm. they say, my friend, yes. this can only be God. Absolutely. Are you creative? Absolutely. Are you productive? And by the way, are yeah. you profitable? Are you profitable? Hmm. Those are the realities of everything. Because when you see all the things, if you have to go back and look at all the things that the people brought hmm. for Bezalil to work with, yes. the list is huge. Hmm. Now you don't realize why he needed knowledge and I understanding. I think we need to go back and read and understand what yes. he's saying. How many things were brought? Goat skin. I don't know this. I don't know what. I don't. Mm. Know. All sorts of stuff was brought. Gold, silver, this, precious stones. Because he had to work all the way and craft everything. Mm. Now if, if he's able to do all that, that is called now workmanship. Mm. There's a place where it is made manifest. It yes. is a place where we now see the outcome of it. Mm -hmm. That means when I look at the outcome, I can work backwards and see the source. Now this was very this was very clear with Solomon. The Bible says that when the Queen of Sheba came, she began by seeing the excellence. Works backwards. Mm -hmm. She said she saw the way the servants were dressed, the way they were positioned, the way they functioned. Mm -hmm. She saw service and excellence. Yes. She saw the food on his table. She saw the, the manifest environment of his kingdom. Then she saw how he ascended to worship God. And there was no, no spirit, spirit left in it. Meaning, all the dimensions that have been mentioned here were found when you went to see Solomon. And also, when you look at this scripture also, yes. going back to the scripture that we've just read, and you see what God is giving to this man called Bezalel, yes. then you see, of course, there are truths that are hidden in there. And we need yes. to look at those truths yeah. and decode them and say there are many. Yes. We can pick up three, we can pick up two and say, these are truths that are hidden in there. Yes, yes. Why? Because if you can see the truths that are hidden in that one scripture, mm -hmm. then you'll be like, you know what? I know what I'm looking for. When you talk about believers in the market space, this is what God is telling us. There are yes. three truths maybe yes. you're going to look at. Okay. And the first yeah. one is where God called Bezalel to a specific work. I want to focus on the word call. Yes. Because... He says to Moses, go to Bezalel, I have called him by name. Okay. Called. Okay, well, what's so important about that statement? Mm -hmm. I've called him by name. Go to Bezalel, I have called him by name. Do you realize that's an oxymoron? He's already Bezalel. Go to him, I have called him by name. Okay, same thing we had about that Cyrus. is one of the <laughs> most powerful truths hidden in that place. Called by name. Wait, but I thought you said it. I've called Bezalil. Okay, yeah. wait, which other name are you calling him? Yeah, I just say I've called Bezalil. Mm -mm. Why say I've called him by name? It's the same thing we see with, with Cyrus. I've called him by name. Mm. That word called by name mm. is not the word name mentioned. It is a word called specifically. Mm accessed god, god has decreed has designed has has spoken into you hmm. who you are when god calls us god doesn't when god calls you <laughs> god calls out the you he placed in you hmm. so there is the you the susan yes that the name by the man. way that name i remember my dad telling me yes. you'll be baptized yeah and you're going for the baptism classes, <laughs> what name do you want? And then my dad told me, I'm not going to choose because yes, you see, yeah. there's the culture where you're told you'll be called like your yes, grandmother's name yes, exact. Yes. My dad said, call yourself. Yes. That my friend, I called myself. <laughs> That's the only name I knew by then. 
Don't come and say God is called Susan. Not no, there's a Susan. No. Now this Susan you're seeing out here. Yes. There is the name God gave. Yes. The minute in Genesis he blessed them. Yes. Bless them. Yes. That blessing is a name. Yeah. This is the name he's calling out of Bezalel. Exactly. You know? And that word name in the Bible is designation. That word name is what you're created as. Mm. That word name mm. is what God named you when he blessed you. He didn't name you Susan, he didn't name me Charles, he didn't name you John. So when I'm going to the marketplace, the body, the yes. Susan outside is yes. walking. Yes. When the government checks my all my papers, they'll see Susan, isn't it? But God is telling you, as you go to find your into the marketplace, carry your ID for the government. Exactly. But when you reach there, there is a space that can only be occupied by yes. the person I'm calling. Absolutely. So you, when you say you're finding your space, that space is being found by the name that God called you. And, and you see, we see this designation in scripture and we don't understand it. Yes. But we say, oh, his name was Abraham, then God changed his name to Abraham. Mm -hmm. No. When God called him in Ur of the Chaldees, God called Abraham, not Abraham. Mm -hmm. God called out who he always was. Eventually, God reveals to him who he's always been called. Mm. So he called Abraham, he called Abraham by name. Yes. Which yes. name? The yes. name that I, the, the thing I placed inside of you is the name I'm calling out. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6, for his name shall be called. Mm -mm. Wonderful, counselor, mm. mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. That is his mm. name shall be called. But we call him Jesus. So do you realize the name called is not the name named? Mm. And that's why we say it when you look at the Bible, because mm. Isaiah says his name shall be, and he gives you all those names. Yes. But when you go, Gabriel comes and tells yeah. uh, Mary, his name, his name shall, shall be, be Jesus. You're like, okay, wait, 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 wait. Did you read Isaiah before you came? So that name Jesus hides the name. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel. Uh, you understand the principle? That's a principle. So I have called Bezalel. Wow. It means I have called out of him these things I'm about to tell you. I have called him for a specific mm -hmm. word. The word called is also the word holy. Mm. I've set him aside. I've designed him. I've created him to be specifically. Mm. From the beginning, this is who he's created to be. So he has what, not become this. What name is God calling you? Yeah. When we say we are going to the marketplace, do you notice that you not just stand up and say, by the way, I'm ready, I've had the message. There's a name God needs to call, and that's the name that is going to occupy. That's the name that is going to thrive. That's the name God wants you to embrace, because when you have that name, my friend, you now have confidence as you step out there that this is my space, because God has called me for this space. Now, and he's equipped now listen carefully. A true prophet mm -hmm. doesn't come to thrust you in a direction. <laughs> yeah. Or tell you what God wants you to do. Sounds like that's what he's supposed to do. No. A true prophet comes and sees what God has called you hmm. and calls it out. Hmm. He sees what's already there. He adds nothing to you. He just calls out what you may not be aware of. That is already within you. Mm. That is part and parcel of your design for which you were already called. And you cannot hear the call without the Holy Spirit. Spirit. You can't hear the call. And that's why we are saying when you talk about activation or, or allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, to take his place in you. Because most of the time we, we dethrone the Holy Spirit. Yeah with our own spirit mm. and decide to lead ourselves. Yeah. So when we say words like enthrone, we might be looking for words that completely define what you're trying to say. Yes. Enthrone the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Let him be the one who defines your life and gives you the measurements of what you should be doing in your life. So you can't hear yes. the call yes. without the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Yes. And, and, I, and I have come to a strange conclusion. Mm -hmm. I call it strange because if this was true, when God calls someone, to a particular thing. And if that thing is what he was called for, mm -hmm. you realize nothing can stop him. So the question that I have come to a conclusion, many times when we are stopped or derailed is because certain aspects of our calling are not clear. Mm -hmm. I've come to that conclusion. Because it can't be that the call of God for which he designed me, the devil has a capacity to slow down. Mm -hmm. Not possible. Mm -hmm. If he slows it down, then there's a dimension of me that has taken over. Mm -hmm. 
And notice, like you're saying, when God calls you, yes, that calling attracts everything required. Absolutely. So you cannot be called and be stuck at the same time. I've, I've, God has called me to the marketplace. Yes. I know my space, but I'm stuck because I can't move. Because I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. God did not tell Bezalel to build all these things and tell him, go and look for the materials. Mm -mm, mm -mm. The people brought. Willingly. Because Bezalel was ready to work. Mm. That's how this works. When the calling, when that sound of God hits the earth, everything required for you to fulfill your calling in the market space comes to you, finds its way to you. And that is why the devil tries to call you to oh. <laughs> by other names, mm -hmm. other designs, other trainings to get you as far away from your call as possible. Now you understand when we tell you, my friend, don't be defined by papers. Mm. The papers can tell you what they are calling you to. Calling you, but <laughs> there is a calling, a higher calling that you could be walking into the market space with papers in your hand and a calling in your heart. Exactly. The problem is when you confuse your life and allow the papers to be the ones in your heart. So even though somebody speaks to you, you are only hearing the definitions yeah. in your papers. Yes. Do you now understand? Listen, you now guys, understand. Get all the papers you want. Yes. But this is what happens hmm. when the call comes. Look at the papers that line up with the call. Hmm. And discard the rest. Hmm. Yeah. You can have acquired many papers, but there's a particular, once the call is clear, there are certain aspects because God did not throw away Daniel's knowledge of Babylon. Yes. Not throw away his understanding of their philosophies. Mm. Not throw away their literature. Mm. But his spirit defined how Daniel mm. functioned within that context in such a way that he functioned above all mm. those who were a part of that. And you know, sometimes also when you think of the papers, why do we go looking for papers? There's a desire a inside of us. There's yeah. something inside of us saying, listen, I was created for something. Yes. So even though I'm going looking, all these trainings, I'm trying to find myself. So when the call comes, it defines you. I love what you say. Yes. Look at your papers. Yeah. What what agrees That's it. with this? That's it. Whatever doesn't stop holding on to things yes. that will not take you anywhere. You know, people, right? people have often asked us the same question. Yeah. What is the place of culture? Isn't it good for people to retain their culture? And I said the word there is the problem. Their culture. Their culture, mm. not God's culture. Mm. There is where the problem starts. Mm. But if you have a list of your culture and you look at God's culture, culture and these things line up, bring them in, but you know what will happen? Mm. They will find secondary alignment, not primary. Because mm. when God comes yes. and tells you, honor your father and your mother, yes. that is the kingdom culture. It's culture. That's kingdom culture. But now look at the same scripture, Lord, how your scripture. culture has interpreted yes. or rather reinterpreted that scripture. That word then you honor. ask yourself, that cultural reinterpretation, does it agree with the interpretation of God? If it doesn't adjust that, not the word of God. Yes. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Honor. Honor. And, and, and let, me, let me be clear. <laughs> Let me be clear. I don't know why I'm laughing. Let me be clear because yes. you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Let me be clear. Yeah. Children, obey your parents. Sons, honor. <laughs> Sons don't obey their parents. Listen that sounds so wrong coming from a cultural perspective. Sons don't obey their parents. They honor them. You yeah. know how you honor your parent? By living a life of value. Mm. The greatest honor I get from their children is their lifestyle. Mm. Not them coming and playing homage to me as a as a father yes when your son prospers That's when your honor. son finds his footing yes. when your son becomes That's and honor. he births sons yes that's what he yes. honors you with yeah not with money yeah. and things when they, when they when they have when they're adults and i give advice and they choose to use it and it is good advice it's called honor mm. they don't obey me they honor they honor if they obey me, they are still children. They are not ready to be married. Mm. Mm. That's that again. Wow. <laughs> a married couple, spouse, who obeys their parent, needs to go back home. They did not leave. When the they Bible talks left. about the man leaves and cleaves, never left. this man is supposed to honor his yes. parents, not obey. Why do we say that? Yes. Because there are times God could be calling him yes. for a particular purpose, but the parents know what they think mm. he should be doing. And yes. that is why in 
would not say in Kenya, yep. I will not talk about other countries, decide if this happens, you will see many people telling you, you know what, I went to school mm -hmm. and now I'm a doctor. It was about my parents, not me. Now, when I hear the call, and I'm telling you this is what I've always wanted to do, but whatever God is calling me to, my parents don't call it prestigious. Exactly. Therefore, I'm stuck with this call called doctor because it is my parents who wanted that. Why? In their day, in their generation, that was powerful. In mine, I want to be a developer, but they can't understand what a developer is. So what do you do now? You live a life that is contradictory because in one thing, you are called to be a doctor, but a doctor is about the lives of people. So your And parents, you don't have it because you're not that. You're not called, you're not defined as that. Parents, listen. Yeah? Stop trying to make your child live the future you missed, which is now the mm. past. Mm. That's sad. Do you know that statement? It is the future you missed, but it is now the past. Mm. That is sad. You cannot do that because you're going to make them redundant. Mm. You will get be proud, but they will be failures. Mm. So when you talk about legacy, when you talk about God telling, commending Abraham and saying, I now know you, you will teach your children's children the ways of the Lord. Yes. What does that mean? You will allow your children to be who they were called to there be. There you go. Be there satisfied with who you are called to be and know your time was. That was beautiful. But in their time, in their day, and in the days to come, there is a calling of today. God is saying, listen, I'm looking for this. I'm not looking for Elijah's. No. God is not going back and saying, you ah. know what? I want you to be like uh, no. Elisha. No. No. I want you to be like hmm. a, a Noah. Noah to do what? Build ark for who? We don't need an ark now. Yes. So parents, release your children to the call of God. That's it. It is the best place to be. That's called being called. So, <laughs> the second truth yes. we find in this scripture, you're talking about the scripture that we've just read. Yes. And the second truth is God empowered yes. Bezalel to do a specific work. Exactly. So you notice that the verse says, he filled Bezalel with the spirit of God. And this time, every time it's used, in the Old Testament, it means God is fitting someone for a task. Mm. You have to notice that. Yeah. So he has filled him to be able to. He has filled him to do. We cannot be filled to have. Mm. We can't be filled to be filled. Mm. We are filled to do. That's very crucial. Yes. So And to do something specific. Remember because it's workmanship? Yes. It is quality. So there was a specific assignment. He wasn't failed and told to go and do anything. I mm. have failed him that he may build. And God defined, if you go to verse 3, God defined exactly how mm -hmm. he filled him. Yes. And if you read the rest of that whole story, you'll see exact, there were actual dimensions. Mm. There were specifics. Mm. There were all sorts of ways this thing had to be done. That was the key behind Empowered. it. Empowered. Empower. So the calling yes. empowers you. And the word empower, mm -hmm. empower, yes. is the same word we get from the word blessed. Mm -hmm. The word blessed means empowered to prosper. Empowered to prosper means to empower to succeed in that which it has been sent for. Mm. So if, he, if he's being called to a specific work, yes. the blessing, when you say blessed, we are saying that you're already empowered exactly. to thrive in that specific work. Exactly. You need empowerment in the market space. When you find your market space, you are empowered. Do you see how powerful this is? That if I'm saying I'm going to my market space, I'm saying I'm called. And I am empowered. I'm empowered. I am the best there is in doing what I am doing. Mm. Just think about it. The children of Israel, so many of them, God picks a person called Bezalel. God picks a person called Aholiab. And these are the two people who are going to build a picture that he's showing Moses. Now Moses was the leader. Yes. God showed him a picture, but God That's told it. him, you as you as the, to calling, give the design. The empowerment mm. is when I give you this, you are able to pass You it. share the design. Mm -hmm. Once you share the design. So the, so the way it worked is interesting. God shares the design with Bezalel. Bezalel has the wisdom for how it should be designed and worked, him and Aholiab. Then God also says, and we didn't put that verse there, verse 4, you will see, if you go and read it, it says, and they were able to train the other people. Look at how far it goes. Yes. This ability is not just to do. It is even to train. Why? Because Bezalel knows everything about everything, but there are specific people to be trained for specific mm. things. Mm. Mm. Do you see how this works in the marketplace? Yes. So when I am empowered, when I go there, I'm not a one-man show. Mm -hmm. I have capacity to also empower 
others because I am empowered. So when you stand in the market space, you're saying, yes, I'm in my space. Yes. But in your space, remember, in the body of Christ, there's growth. Yeah. When we had Bez Bezalil and their holy apps, there were people who would be like them yes. in days to come, yes. but they had to grow them. They had to train them. Who are you training? Yeah. Who are you pulling up? How many people are you pulling up? How can you look back and say, you know what? My heart is clean that I have pulled up this and this and this. God is about people. And in every stage, right now, there's somebody we are pulling up. Yes. There's somebody we are pulling and up. And what have you created or produced that yes. has made somebody else's workload better? Mm. Sometimes that's how you empower. You wow. empower by creating something, a tool, a process, mm. a strategy that makes everybody's work more efficient and easier to do so that they can produce better. So God empowered, God yes. blessed. Yeah. God empowered him to prosper, to thrive in that specific work that he has called him. So God called him, God empowered him. And the third truth we are seeing there, God designed Bezalel with a specific work in mind. That means he was unique to his process. This, are, this thing is, let, let me put it this way. The idea that you're unique to your process is a very interesting idea because some of you have heard us talk about all the abilities God has given us. All of us have five senses, the same. Mm -hmm. All of us have the same capacity in terms of physical structure. But the thing God gives you, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, determines the unique combination of each one of us. Mm. That's why even in a music band or an orchestra, nobody does the same thing. Everybody is doing something different here. They're playing the same song. Because it is unique in the way that they are specifically designed. Mm. And everybody's design matters to the overall sound of the music. Mm. So harmony is a picture of many skills. Mm. It's, it's actually one of the most powerful pictures yes. to look at. If one person unskilled in that group, they'll call, cause disharmony. Mm. Can you imagine? One musician plays one note off, the whole song sounds bad. Wow. Because one person was not operating in their unique designed position. You have a design, you have a particular yes. design yes. that you operate in, in the specific work. Yes. Meaning when we say that God designed you with a specific work in mind we are telling you today you can wake up with confidence that you're in the mind of god that god is not he just he just doesn't drop you in the earth and tell you my friend find your way out yes. no you're in his mind and that is where the devil when you talk about the bible and where the devil uh the angel that was asking yes who is man that you're, that you're so mindful of him yes who is man? That's what the devil always wonders. Listen, what is this that you keep thinking of? Your mind is full of this yes. man. Who is man? Exactly. Do you know the man he was asking about? You and me? Yeah. He's asking, what is it in this person that you're so mindful of this person? Mm. We're in the mind of God. So when we talk about going to the market space yes. and understanding that we are designed for the place, therefore God is the one when you talk of the Holy Spirit. Why is he guiding you? You're in the mind of God. Absolutely. That's a very powerful thing. Absolutely. So three truths that we find. God calls you. God empowers you. God designs you. For that place we are calling your market space. You see how powerful that is? Yeah. And remember, part-time. Be unique with where you are. Mm. Excel at where you are. Even though Joseph had the greatest uniqueness. Yes. There was a season when Joseph excelled as a servant. Yep. Excel in the prison. Mm -hmm. Excel in the palace. In other words, excel irrelevant of where. Even in the slave are. market. Excel. Be the best slave so you can be bought by the best guy. But you can only do that if you know. You know what? Specific work has already been set aside for me. Yes. I'm in the mind of God. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the mind of God. So maybe just before we finish, we need to ask them, what does it mean then? In this context, to be filled by the Holy Spirit, that's a good question wow. for us to ask. So that when we sit and say, I am filled, I'm speaking in tongues, I'm speaking in the language of the Spirit. What does that all mean? So, what does it mean? <laughs> so first, let's agree. Being filled by the Holy Spirit is not anointed magic. <laughs> okay. All right. Where yes. people, people kind of think, and, and it sounds good, but sounding good doesn't make it good. Mm. When I say, receive wisdom. No, you don't. 
<laughs> wisdom is not thrown at you. Mm. Maybe it's mm. declared at you. Wisdom is something that comes is activated from within you. Mm. So you can receive wisdom without any sound. With no noise and no decree. Because God, as you went into the scriptures and you begin to hear truth and you received truth, you receive wisdom by receiving truth, not by receiving a decree. You see how we can misuse things. Mm. And the Bible describes the Holy Spirit. There's another term in the Greek called the parakletos. The parakletos is a very interesting word. It's a word that talks about he who comes alongside to help. But it's a much bigger word than that. Mm -hmm. He comes to help, which means he has capacity to expand anything, but he, that anything must come from you. Mm. He comes alongside to help. Yes. Meaning... I can't come alongside to help you if you're not if you're doing, doing anything. A thing. What am I coming to help? So the Holy Spirit yes. is a, when you say he's our helper. Yes. Doesn't mean, listen carefully. This is not in the context, I want you to be very clear. When the Bible says he the Spirit of God, he's a helper. When God, same word exactly used in the Hebrew is the word help meet. Mm. When God brought Eve into the picture yes now you must understand help me it meant what it means there's an assignment to be done mm -hmm. she has a very specific unique part to play in that assignment so let's take even a natural process for you to understand a man has seed a woman has a womb she will help you bring forth a child mm. Mm. okay but the seed is yours and look at how the two activities are different. Yes. Like first, you, you cannot come and say, you know what, I'm bringing seed. Yes. And the woman is taking the seed and carrying it along. No, no, no. no. When she takes the seed, it takes yes. another nature. That's it. So when you talk of the Holy Spirit and he gives you, there's a word that you have received. Yes. An instruction. And yes. he's your helper in the market place. Exactly. What you end up doing there is so different from the word when the word was given to you yes. and it man manifested yes. when we see the manifestation exactly because when you see what bezalil did yes we'll be like wow is this what was in the mind of god in fact the good thing about technology mm -hmm. is that today there is a whole new dimension of technology that changes how to explain this so let me explain it using an athlete or a sports person and a coach okay and uh here i'll speak about one of our people um, nick i'm giving you free marketing right here <laughs> because uh, nick is a sports scientist coach trainer consultant now what does nick do he's got technology where he's able to put you in the field give you say a vest that has technology he's able to by that vest interpret your processes mm and come back and tell you you need to improve a and b to make you better mm -hmm. he can literally improve you what we don't know is that these technologies do exist and that's why many of the countries in the western hemisphere are better than the countries in the global south because we just keep trial and error mm -hmm. shoot 50 times no there is a way to adjust your shooting it is not how many times or how hard you shot okay there is a technology behind now the holy spirit works exactly like that mm -hmm. He's our helper, but you are the player. Mm. So you are Nick, the one in the field. Nick can come and tell you yes. when you run, yes. do not use so much energy on your hand. Exactly. Or do not. Now the things he's telling you you have to do. Exactly. But he's also adjusting you yes. to perfect what you have been called to do. You're already doing it. Neither will Nick come and tell you, let me run for you. This particular space you're not yes. been able to do. Let me do let it. Let me take for over. You. No. So when he advises yes. you, it is you to yes. adjust. So the yes. Holy Spirit as he's walking alongside us, yes. he's telling you in the market space, don't speak like this. Exactly. Don't do. I'll show you. And by the way, the Bible says, he will teach you all things. And there is one thing. All. There is one thing. Your manifestation in the market space. One thing Nick cannot do. Hmm. He cannot make a swimmer a basketballer. Hmm. He can improve a basketballer. Okay. He can improve a swimmer. He can improve a golfer. Mm. He cannot convert them from what they are not mm. to make them something else. So when you talk about the Holy Spirit as our helper, yes. if I am called like mm. a Bezalel, yes. now Bezalel could not have come told the Holy Spirit, I prefer to be Moses, no. make Moses, yeah. be changed, yeah, yeah. swap us. We all, we all have you the are God anyway. Listen, <laughs> Moses had the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit. Let me go do what Moses does. And the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So if I do Moses' work and Moses does mine. It's okay. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit only paracletos. He only helps you within your functional assignment. He does not 
replace you. Thank you. So if you're called to do a specific work in the market space, in that space, you will do. He will not replace you. Oh, yes. And that is so powerful because yeah. most of the time you always say, you know, Lord, uh, do. We all have this mentality of God. The Holy Ghost will do for me. I'm no, waiting on no. God to do this for mm. me. No, no, no. He will do, not do something. The Holy Spirit will assist you to excel in it. Mm. Mm. And when the Bible says he will lead us into all truth. Yes. When you go to the market space, there's a truth of how God intended that place That's to it. be. There's a truth. There's an unmovable way God needed that place to work. Yes. Uh, you, nobody will change it. Nobody will move it. Nobody will bring it into another form. Yes. That truth is what the Holy Spirit leads you to. Exactly. When you come to this place and know, you know what? There's a thing God set me to do. Because God already said it, it is immovable. That's Nobody it. can swap it. Therefore, I have confidence. He leads you into that. Yes. So he leads you into all the truth. And he does not, that's powerful. He does not replace you. No. That one we need to The get. Holy Spirit does not nullify mm -hmm. or diminish human responsibility. Oh. He doesn't. Mm. Jesus said, go into all the world. Who goes? We go. He doesn't go. Mm. Lo, I will be with you. There is a difference. Mm. Mm. You go, but I will be with you. So when you talk of the man and the woman, the man has seed. The woman yes. has womb. Yes. The woman will not say, by the way, I can even get my own seed. That's I'm not problem. replacing the no. man. I'm complimenting. I'm complimenting. Mm. I'm working alongside for us to bring out what God intended. And please remember that while the man has the seed and the woman has the womb, please understand the child is born of God, is not your child. Mm. Mm. God's purpose in the earth, wow. not your cultural baby. Mm. Okay. That's why we say that children are a gift from, from God. God, not a gift to you. A gift to their generation. I will say that again. All right. Children yes. are a gift from God, not to you, parents. Okay. Bring up a child in the way he will. Go. Thank you. Go is the operative word here. Mm. They you are a bring gift him to up, their generation. But he will go into his generation. It's a gift. But you have generation. a responsibility yes. to raise him in a way that he'll be valuable in his generation. His generation. Wow, That's what it. a way to look at life. Because if I look at it that way, I will even be looking at those children and telling God, you know what, I'm humbled that you allowed me to have these children so that I may lead them in your ways, yes. that they may manifest you in their generation. Listen. Wow. Joseph and Mary hmm. were not raising Jesus to be Jesus Joseph. Mm, yes. <laughs> they were raising him to be the son of God. Hmm. That's our assignment to all our children. Wow. And notice what he said at 12. Yes. yes. Didn't you know yes. I was about my father's business? Exactly. Who taught him that? He didn't just wake His up and got a good statement. That. There's a Joseph, who the him. invisible father, yes. who taught him that you have a father who has put you in this earth. That's it. And he has a mission. He has called you, empowered you, and there's a design why you are here. That's it. And he says, I'm about my father's business. How many of us today can say, as I step out to go into the marketplace, I'm here for my father's business. That's there's the There's something God wants you to accomplish. In the earth, listen, creation is not waiting for our sons. <laughs> Even though we brought them That's up. That's good. That's good. Waiting That's for good. the sons of God. Sons of God do not come from heaven. Hmm. They come from our homes. They are come men from our today families. who are yes. raising sons of God. That's it. And you see, when you talk about even in the church, when you talk about sons, this is my son, huh. this is my daughter. Listen, you're raising God's sons. Not yours. Are they taking the nature of their father God? Or, or they are yours. taking the nature of their spiritual father in the earth? That's what nature problem. are you putting in the sons that you're raising? So when you call someone your son, my friend, there's a responsibility. Because for me, when I'm looking at you, I'm watching and saying, when I look at you and I look at that, you are both from together. Have you ever yes. heard that one? You are from together. <laughs> from together. I cannot see God <laughs> in that son. So what are we raising? We should be raising the sons of God because creation yes. awaited this manifestation of the sons of God Those are, that were developed, raised by men. Let me ask you, man of God, mm. is your son having impact in the body or in your ministry? Wow. Good question. Are you raising him to grow your ministry? Or is he having an impact in the <laughs> ministry? Not your ministry. The ministry called the kingdom of God. Wow. 
then you're bringing up a son. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not a son. Wow. We have been given a role in developing the skills and talents that you have been given. We cannot just sit and say, the Spirit of God will come upon me, and therefore I will become this, and I will become that. No, you become because you develop yourself. Yes. You have to. So the Spirit comes to yes. help, to not help. to replace. To replace. Yeah? And why? Because like Bezalel, God created everybody with a specific work in mind. Jesus said, I came to destroy the works of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Our primary call is to destroy the works of the enemy. Our primary call. But how do we destroy the works of the enemy? By creating good works. I'll say that again. Mm. We do not destroy the works of the enemy by attacking the works of the enemy. While Jesus said he came to destroy the works of the enemy, mm -hmm. what do you see Jesus doing? A work of the enemy is sickness. What does he do? He heals. Mm. He doesn't go after sickness. Mm -hmm. Not his interest. Yeah. All right? When you get people who are blind, you do not go attacking the blindness. You give sight. So everybody is designed, called, empowered for a specific work. That specific work is the transformation of life so it can go back to the order of the kingdom. Mm. That's what we call work. When Adam was given work, he was carrying out God's mandate. He was not trying to survive. If anything, food was given before work. Of every tree, you can freely eat. So work was not for provision. Work was not for survival. Work was God's divine mandate of filling the earth. Mm. So we've been designed. God has not designed us to find our path to survival. God has designed us to end the idea of survival. It's a good way to end our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to end yes. our conversation. And you know what? When you talk about the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit in us to lead us, to guide us, to help and be our helper, yes. then you will understand that when God calls you into the marketplace, He's telling you you're not going there to fit in with what men have said, but you're bringing in a pattern from heaven that God put in you yes. before the foundation of the earth. Understand that work is spiritual yes. and is a call from God. Listen, work is spiritual. Please notice that stuff. Spiritual doesn't mean when you go to work you're holding your hands together and you're being holy. It means that activity you're carrying is spirit filled. It is spiritual. The outcome comes from the spirit of God. That makes work spiritual. And that makes work holy. We take this opportunity to invite you to a couple's dinner in Mombasa, Kenya. We'll be talking matters, believers in the marketplace. How do couples interact and engage with this season? You know, we are living in a time when there's such a pull on the marketplace that family, marriage is one of the first casualties. And we need to go back and look at, was there a way? Is there a way, A, where we can function as we are? B, change the design so it fits heaven's design? or see, come up with a completely different design of how we're supposed to do marriage in these volatile scenarios that we live in today. And all the solutions exist. So join us so we can have this conversation because the next dimension of things is going to get radically different and we need to be ready for it. And of course, when you talk about couples in the marketplace, we are saying that there's a scripture that we find when Noah was told to leave the ark and he was told, this is an instruction from God that you and your wife and your sons. In this season, it's about you and your wife, couples coming out together and strong in their market space. We take this opportunity to invite you to an open meeting in Mombasa, Kenya. We are calling this meeting, The Believers in the Marketplace. How do we engage and how do we interact? And it's very designed specifically for Mombasa because you've got your, your own unique setting, yes. your own unique environment. But listen, you can still travel down, take a break for a few days and join us in this conversation. Because as the market space opens up, and the marketplace opens up, like we've always said, there are many voices. We have to get the clear voice of God so we don't end up chasing our tails in the name of Kingdom Market Space. Looking forward to see you and of course invite a friend. Keep it Kingdom, keep it pure.